Well, hello there, everybody. It is Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am hopping along with Altenew for their Build a Flower blog hop. And this month we have the Snapdragon Build a Flower and Coordinating Die. This here is the packaging for the die, but I wanted to show you the images because it gives a really good idea of what this should look like when everything is stamped out. So you get two full flowers with the stems and I'm going to pull out the pamphlet here to show you the inside because one, it is so beautifully put together, but also they give such great ideas and inspiration as well as some ink uh, layering ideas as well, which I think is just so helpful. So for today's video, I thought I would share with you a few ways that I like to take my layered stamped cards and bring them to the next level for my layered stamping. To start off, I'm going to use some of the mini ink cube sets. These sets are so great because they take the guesswork out. Every ink is there for you that you need to start layering your flowers. And again, I'm going to take this one step further today. So I'm using Red Cosmos uh, ink collection and the warm and cozy ink collection and I'm going to be using frosty pink on the very bottom half of this flower and this is the first layer of one of the snapdragon flowers and then I'm going to use use sun kissed on the top of the same flower and this is going to make a really nice ombre or faded look. I was looking up some photos of snapdragons when I was looking at how they're colored and one of my favorite images that I found of snapdragons was one that went from a really nice vibrant pink to a really vibrant bright yellow and I wanted to recreate that in this card. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with all of the layers. Now I go up in succession or down I guess because I'm going to a darker color but because there's only three layers of stamping for these flowers, I'm only using three colors. So for the reds, I'm using frosty pink, coral berry, and ruby red. And then for the oranges, I'm using sun-kissed, orange cream, and autumn blaze. I know that I want about half of my flower in one color and half in the other, but I don't need a rigid line or decide to exactly where I need to stop each color. I just make sure that I go over the pink with the yellow a bit because I do want to have that blend. One of my favorite parts about this stamp set is the stems. There's two parts to each stem for each individual flower and that's because the top portion of the stem actually looks as if it is going through the flowers. I love that about this stamp set. I think that it brings so much interest into the stamped image but there is a catch. I find that with this stamp set it is easiest to die cut the flowers out at this point. So when you have the entire top section uh, stamped and ready to go, before you stamp the bottom section of the stem, I would advise to die cut it out now. And the reason for that is because it's tough to line up exactly where you need that stem without seeing the die cut. You could be off a little bit to the left or to the right and not even realize it or it doesn't even look like it, but then when you go to die cut it out, you'll have you'll be slightly off center or off line just in your stem, not in your flower. And so to prevent that or to avoid that, I would suggest going in and die cutting it out at that step so that you can then just use an acrylic block and stamp in the couple of images for the stems and the leaves in the lower half. If you've watched my recent Distress Oxide video where I stamp with Distress Oxides in a very similar way, you'll notice that these dye inks blend and where the Distress Oxides didn't. I will link that video here in the upper right hand corner, uh, but that's because Distress Oxides have pigment they're pigment inks and these Altenew uh, crisp dye inks are dye inks, uh, like it says. So it blends really well together. And I just love the way that this clean and simple card came out. These colors, I think just speak for themselves. And so I wanted to keep it really nice, clean and simple. Next, I'm going to be creating one of my favorite types of cards with these build a flower sets. And that is basically just flowers everywhere. So for that, I need lots of flowers, obviously lots of floral images. And as you can see in my last example, it took a little bit to get the layered sets all lined up and then 
stamped. And I definitely want both types of flowers that are included in the set in this card. So I needed to find a way to quickly get these images stamped so that I can have lots of flowers without it taking forever. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of cardstock that measures eight and a half by 11 inches and cut it widthwise down the center at five and a half. So now I have two pieces of cardstock, both measuring five and a half by eight and a half. I'm then going to take one of these pieces of cardstock and place it in my Misty, and then I'm able to put down my first layer stamp from each image on the top portion of this cardstock. I can then go ahead and close the Misty door, and now I'm going to be able to get eight floral images from the just placing this stamp one time. So the first thing I'm going to do is ink it up in frosty pink. I'm then going to rotate my cardstock and then ink it up in my next color, which is sunkissed. Then I can go ahead and change the cardstock to my other piece and then do two more colors there as well. That way I get a lot of variety. Again, I'm now just going to go ahead and rotate this cardstock and stamp it for the final time. And this is where I get all eight of these floral images. Now here's the really cool part. I'm going to take my second layer and line it up with any of the stamps that I've, or any of the first layer stamps that I've already stamped, and then ink that up in my next darkest shade, depending on the shade that I'm using at the time. But since these are all lined up exactly the same, I don't have to line up another stamp or another second layer. And then again, once I do it to my third layer, it will all line up perfectly. I love the way that this works. You can also use this for bulk making cards. If you're uh, bulk making like a Christmas card or birthday cards, it's great use for that. I learned this technique from my friend Justine Hovey and I will link her video doing the same type of thing in the description because it really changed my life once I realized I can make all the flowers <laughs> with just one simple placement of my stamps. The next technique I'm going to show to elevate your cards is actually more of a personal favorite. I love watching people in the community that are so good at Copic coloring and color pencil coloring and I love when they do white or very light florals. And I always have trouble with that coloring. And I thought it was virtually impossible with layered stamps until I realized, you know what? Let me just omit the first layer. So that's what I'm going to do. We're not going to stamp the first base layer. We're going to start with the second layer. I'm going to ink it up in frosty pink, which is a very, very light shade. And then for my second layer or third layer really, but it's my second layer in this technique, I'm using frosty pink again, but this time I'm going to stamp this image or this outline layer three times. That way the frosty pink on the outline layer gets three impressions and builds up on each other to make it just slightly darker. And then that way the flowers themselves look either white or like a really light pink. And I love that. I love the way the florals look with the really dark green color that I made the stem. And this just makes me so happy that I figured out how I can do this with layered stamps because I often like to have really light pastel colors. And this is a great technique that you can use for that. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I hope that you will go in the description for the blog hop link, as well as the links to all of the products used here today. I really appreciate you stopping by. Leave a comment. Let me know if you've learned anything new and what your favorite tip was. Thanks so much. And I'll see you again soon. Thank you.